Okay, hello everyone. My name is Jasper. I'm the research analyst at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. And I'm also a biostatistics PhD student at the University of Toronto. Today, I will introduce our work, the Serve Digitizer, an, an R package to automate the digitization of published Kepler mile curves. So first, the acknowledgement. This study was financially supported by an unrestricted grant by Canadian Agency for Drugs and Technologies in-house. And thanks to my collaborators. And this, the poster for this project recently won the first prize in the virtual poster presentation competition in the student conference of 2023 Statistical Society of Canada annual meeting. So here are the outlines of today's workshop the introduction, the R-based survive digitizer, and live demonstration application discussion and conclusion and Q&A. So first of all, what is the role of survival analysis in economic evaluations and meta-analysis? So economic evaluations and meta-analysis often rely on survival probabilities from kepler mile curves. And HDA used statistical methods like decision analytic modeling and network meta-analysis, which often use time to event data, which, which also allow researchers to estimate the survival or incidence probabilities, which support evidence-based decision-making in house care. So what is a kepler mile curve? It is a graphical representation of survival data. And it estimates event probabilities over time while accounting for sensor observations. And it's widely used in medical research for survival analysis and comparing treatment groups. So current methods to reconstruct patient level data involving manually digitizing QM curves and extract at risk tables. Manual extraction of probabilities from QM curves is time consuming, expensive, and prone to error, difficult to reproduce. It also requires technical training, leading to increased time commitment. So here I'll show um, manual digitization steps. This is an example using the um, tool engaged dig digitizer for a single KM curve. First, we open the source image file set axis, and then we select curve and digitize curve by a mouse click. If we have multiple curves exist, we have to repeat the steps from step three that uh, select curve and digitize curve. Then we export the digitized data. So now we propose a new approach to survival analysis that is automating KM curve digitization. The aim is to develop an efficient and accurate algorithm to automate the extraction of survival probabilities from KM curves. And the performance of algorithm will be evaluated through a simulation study and validation on real world published KM plots. This approach aims to reduce user input, increase accuracy and ensure reliability. And the goal is to provide an open source R package and a shiny app for easy accessibility thereby promoting reproducibility and consistency in results. So for the R-based survival curve digitizer, it is an algorithm that automates digitization of KM curves from image files. So on the left-hand side, it shows an example of KM curve, and right-hand side is what we want, a table that we can see as the time goes up, this this how survival probability goes. And there will be a curve identifier for multiple curves. So here there are two curves. We have uh, curve one and curve two. So here are the methods overview that some highlighted points of our algorithm that we use HS scale image processing, that is hue, saturation, and lightness. It simplifies the process of identifying and separating colors in cam curve images and it helps enhance the accuracy and the robustness of digitization algorithm. We also employ the optical character recognition, the OCR for access, location, and labels. It helps detect location of words and numbers as references. We use K-medroid clustering for separating multiple curves. 
It is clustering algorithm that uses method instead of centroids to minimize the sum of dissimilarities between data points, making it more robust to noise and outliers than k-means. So first of all, we read the image and identify axis. So we specify input the number of curves, the y and x axis increments, the y and x axis range, and remove lens and clear the plot. So here we can see in the middle that we detect axis and reset the pixel location to the, to the area we are interested in and clean the figure. And here are the color clustering and line isolation. After we have the clean plot, we identify the clusters and those identify the color, color clusters and find the pixels belong to each cluster. And then we are able to separate the, the curves. At the end of the day, we map the pixel location back to the time and the probability scale. On the left-hand side, we can see all those pixels are in the pixel scale that from zero pixel to around 500 pixel. On the original scale, it is the time scale from zero to 10. We, we did the performance validation using simulation and real world study. For the simulation, we conduct simulation by generating 36 KM data sets from an exponential distribution and a random sensory plotted KM curves and use R-based graphics and ggplot style. And we compare the source data and digitize KM curves using root mean square arrow, the IMSE, for both auto-digitized and manual digitized curves against the actual values. Here for the manual digitization, we gain the help from a well-trained researcher to do the manual digitization. For the real-world scenario, we evaluated the real-world application by compare auto-digitized and manual digitized curves compared by well-trained researchers. And we use eight real-world survival curves and digitized with engaged digitizer. Here, we didn't com compare those two curves by the rooted mean square since we don't know the ground truth. Instead, we applied the blend outman analysis, that is, help us assess the agreement between the manual digitization and automated digitization. It is a measure of a consistency. So here's the simulation result. We show a IMSC box plot stretched by the sample size and number of curves. On the y-axis, we can see that uh, it shows the IMSC from zero to 0 0.05. From the x-axis, we show the sample size. That is uh, how many individuals we are going to use to create or generate the KM curve. That is range from 50 to 250. And as we can see, as the sample size goes up, the IMSE has a decreasing trend. We also compare three different sets. That is uh, for a single KM curve, the number of curve is one, the number of curve is two, and number curve is three. So as the we can see for the number of curves, as the number of curves goes up, there's an increase to trend for the IMSE. For the comparison on agreement, we perform blank outman analysis also as the blank outman plot. On the y-axis, we show the difference between measurement the difference between the survival, automated survival probability digitization and the manual digitization, the probability. And then we also, on the y x axis, we show the range of the probabilities. As we can see, for the, uh, we, we use the 95% confidence interval to see how it, how the models performance robustness over the, all the test cases. And we can see for majority of the blue dot, it is within the range of acceptability that is the 95% confidence interval. And we can see some of the blue dots outliers and it is the, not the common case. And for most of the 
plot of, for most of the measurement, we see a, an agreement between the automated survival plot digitization and manual digitization. So now I show a live demonstration for digitizing a survival curve. Here, this is the survival curve example I pick. Here, the number of curves are two, and uh, there will be no indicators for sensory at this point. And the axis range is 0 to 10 by a step size 1. And the y-axis range is 0 to 1 by a step size 0 0.25. That's so for just to note those five minutes. Oh, thank you. And there's a um, variable called y-axis vertical, that is, which is important for us to locate the pixel location of information on y-axis. That here we can see if the y-axis labels, the, the, those numbers are, are all similar to the x-axis, it is the vertical direction that we set it to true at this point. So the step one is install the package. Uh, we use step two install from the GitHub and we load the library. The library is called sub, serve digitizer. Then we run the serve digitize function by using our predefined input. That is the location of the curve, the KM curve name. Here is KM curve PNG. And number of curves censoring is false here. And those X axis and Y axis information, the start end and the step size. And at the end of the day, we set the Y axis vertical to be true here. Then that's it. As once uh, you have a simple click, you are able to digitize the survival curve. Um, here's the here are the results. On the left hand side, I show the auto the reconstructed plot from the auto digitization and comp we overlay on the original plot file and the uh, image file. And on the right hand side, we ask the well trained researcher to help us use the engage digitizer to digitize the plot. And we can see for, we have, there's an agreement between the auto digitization and manual digitization. And for the curve quality, visually, we, we just compare. We can see for the auto digitization, it shows the more smooth curves. So, so at the end of the day, you just uh, save the, result to a table and that's it. We also provide a VNet page that you are able to see how it uh, goes for this example. You can give it a try on your own. Yep, to conclude my today's workshop, uh, our algorithm streamlines the digitization with minimal input. It simplifies the digitization process, requiring minimal user interaction for efficient result. And it is accurate in various scenarios. In, we successfully digitize CAM curves in both simulated and real world scenarios, showing accuracy comparable to manual digitization methods. And we have the open source R package available on GitHub, and we are currently building the R Shiny app. That's the end for my today's workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jasper. I'm um, very exciting to see that. And uh, there's been a lot of excitement in the chat about your presentation. So there's a lot of questions, um, but a, a lot of them relate to how this method will perform on low quality Kaplan-Meier curves, uh, curves with dashed versus um, solid lines or ones with 95% confidence intervals. Um, but as the host, I get to ask the question I want to know, which is how will your method work on black and white curves where the craw curves cross? because your simulation study is entirely exponential, so you won't have any crossing. And I don't know if you assumed that the curves were colored in your simulation. Oh yeah, probably I'll just uh, answer that question first. Yeah. So for, for the black and the white, uh, currently we don't have any test case on that. I think in Q saturation and lightness scale, um, black and the white are easier for us to, to detect. And I'll definitely give it a try on the, a pure black and white style of curves. And I can tell for any of the overlap, we have a overlap in overlap detect or overlap impute 
a function in our algorithm that if we see some overlap or those curves are, are, are almost crossing with each other, we can see for those pixel locations, they are shared by two curves. That's the tricky part, say, if we, at the very beginning, we know there are two curves, then we know some overlap part, those pixels are shared. So we are still able to, uh, to reconstruct two curves separately. Hope it partially answered your question. And yeah, definitely I'll give it a try to pure black and white. No, no, there will be no white curves. Yeah, pure two <laughs> black curves. <laughs> pure two, two same color curves, I'll give it a try. Yeah, interested to hear. Um, so yeah, yes, Jasper, there are a lot of questions in the chat, so um, please do respond to those. Um, but for everyone, we've now reached our uh, first break. So we'll come back in about 13 minutes at 25 past the hour. Uh, Nathan Green will be hosting and um, looking forward to seeing you all. Uh,